Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at this petcock and see if we can figure out what's going on. So this is a Yamaha V-Star 250. It's my sister-in-law's and we went out to eat last week on a lunch and she made it to the end of the neighborhood and it died. We kind of messed with it, you know, first thought. <laughs> you, you always think it's something horrible at first, right? Um, we switched the petcock from on to prime and then up to reserve. After a while, it started back up again, and it ran fine the rest of the time. So we went out again later, and we filled it up with gas, thinking it was probably just low on gas. Filled the tank up completely. The next day, same problem. We had this uh, back to on when we started. Got to the end of the neighborhood, died again. So I have a suspicion that it's clogged. The on line is clogged. It could either be that. It could be a vacuum leak this is a vacuum assisted petcock so when it's on on the fuel is only on when the bike is on because there's a vacuum applied if you turn it to prime what that does is it says i don't care if there's vacuum or not just go ahead and run some fuel through it and then you've got reserve which means suck from the lower straw so a quick example for how a petcock actually works is picture you've got a cup like you're at a fast food restaurant and you've got a cup and you've got a straw if that straw is pulled halfway out and you're getting a drink, eventually you're going to start sucking up air and no longer your liquid, your drink. And that's because your, your level is a little bit higher. So you push your straw down a little bit lower and drink and you can drink a little bit more. The purpose for that is so that when you're on, this, this bike doesn't have a fuel gauge. So you don't really know when you're low on gas or when you're out unless you're counting your miles. So the idea is you turn to on and when your bike dies, it's because you're getting low on fuel, you can switch it up to reserve enough to start it and get to the gas station so you can fill up your tank. So the reserve, the, the straw per se, is going to be low all the way at the bottom of the tank, and when it's on, it may be an inch or so up. What I'm suspecting based on what we experienced is either there's a vacuum leak, which I'm not, I'm not assuming there is, I'm thinking if there was a vacuum leak, the bike would be running like crap and it's not. Um, I suspect that the on is probably clogged. So to figure that out, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm not really familiar with how this petcog works, so I'm just going to pull it off, pull the line off that goes to the carb, turn this on, and then apply vacuum, and see if fuel comes out of that, out of that line, and if it does, how fast it comes out. Then I'm going to compare that with prime, see how quickly the fuel comes out, then I'm going to switch it to reserve. If it comes out quickly in reserve, then I know there's probably a clog in the line somewhere. We probably just need to pull the fuel tank off, um, pull the petcock off, and clean it. Um, under a worst-case scenario, uh, you can usually replace these. They're pretty cheap. I don't know how much it costs on this. Um, but I'm going to start first by just seeing if I can clean it out. Sometimes it, it does seem like petcocks, you know, ever since they started putting ethanol in the fuel, um, a lot of these fuel components don't last like they used to, so it could it could be getting gummed up because of the ethanol, the the, the crappy fuel. Um, it could be I, I don't know. It could there could be a screen on it that's clogged just because um, you know maybe it's it's gotten debris in it. I've seen some people put inline fuel filters that are visible on these, so you can actually see when they clog up. Funny story about that. I rode one time with my father-in-law, and he had a tank that was rusted out real bad. And uh, he could go about a day. Um, he would, he would, we would stick a fuel filter in there. He would ride it for about a day, and and it would clog. But you could visibly see that it had clogged. There was rust particles and stuff in the filter. So we would pull the filter out, stick a new filter in, and then run it for another day. Um, you know, rather than replacing the tank. You know, it's a nice band aid fix. But um, anyway, let's uh, let's start pulling the tank off and see where we get. So we're gonna start by removing the seat. There's a screw here, and a screw on the other side as well. Then we got a 12 millimeter bolt here that holds the tank on. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these um, bolts here that hold the petcock, looks like some kind of a petcock bracket. tank is pretty full of gas. It's usually easier to do this if you can help it when it's low on gas because it just makes everything a little bit lighter. Now over here on this other side there's two more.
Okay, so I got the tank loose. Okay, so to make this easy, I'm going to pull this line off and this line off. And then I should be able to completely remove the tank from the bike. Okay, and this one should be vacuum. So take the little hose clamp off. And then sometimes you get a screwdriver or a pick and get it back there and just kind of get get it up under it and that usually is enough to break the seal and it comes off pretty easy do the same one so this one's a fuel line so we may get a little bit of gas to come out with this one so I got a couple of paper towels handy set them on the floor just in case it uh, spills a little bit I have some handy to clean it up with Okay, not much came out, just a little bit. All right, so I should be able to completely remove the tank now. Let's see, I need to be able to tie this up so it doesn't drain. Or just maybe stick it up through this. Liquid obviously flows downward, so with this hanging, it will just sit there and drip. So I just propped it up behind this other line so that the fuel will stay down there instead of running out. Okay, so I've got this vinyl tube uh, here in the shop. I buy the stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot, like in 10 foot sections. Um, it's not fuel grade or anything like that, but it really does make a nice, um, I mean, it's, it comes in handy a lot. You can cut little sections off, use it for something and throw it away. But what I'm gonna do is I hooked this to the vacuum side. I'm just gonna put this other end on my mouth and suck it like a straw, which should apply vacuum to open this diaphragm so we can test if the on works. Yeah, it looks like it's working just fine. So I don't think there's a problem with, uh, with this petcock. I'm gonna switch it up to reserve just to show you guys. And I'm gonna suck on this again Yep, it's good. So it seems like this one's just fine. We're going to go ahead and put the bike back together, and I guess maybe tomorrow or the next day we'll take it out and uh, drive it a little bit and see if it does the same thing and try to brainstorm if it could be something else. I mean, I guess it, it still could be vacuum-related. I don't know. Um, if, there's a, if there's a problem with the vacuum line, a vacuum leak somewhere, 